The inner ear contains our sensors for balance, which are referred to as the vestibular system. The most important part of the vestibular system can be seen in these semicircular canals, which detect movement of the head in different directions. These innervate superior and inferior vestibular nerves. The inner ear also contains our sensors for hearing, the cochlea. Information coming from the cochlea stimulates the cochlear nerve. All of these nerves are branches of our eighth cranial nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve. The inner ear is surrounded by the osseous or bony labyrinth that holds all of the inner ear structures. Uh, it's fairly complicated, as you can see from this image. Um, it consists of a combination of the osseous vestibule, which holds both the superior and posterior ampulla, the osseous semicircular canals, where the semicircular canals are located, the osseous cochlear labyrinth, where the cochlea is located, and it also has two holes in it um, that are part of the membranous labyrinth, um, which uh, contain the oval window and the round window. The vestibule in the um, osseous uh, labyrinth is uh, the entryway into each of the semicircular canals, the lateral and uh, the superior or anterior semicircular canals are connected by the crus commune, the posterior uh, semicircular canal um, has its own branch off of the vestibule. The osseous cochlear labyrinth looks like a coiled a snail shell uh, matching the shape of the cochlea. It's divided into two chambers called the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani. In between those two chambers is the scala media, which attaches to the osseous spiral lamina. This contains our sensory organ for hearing, the organ of corti. At the uh, far end of this spiral, so uh, at the deepest location within the spiral, uh, we have a landmark called the helicotrema. The round window uh, connects up to the scala tympani side um, of the osseous cochlear labyrinth, while the oval window connects to the uh, scala vestibuli side of the uh, osseous cochlear labyrinth, and both of these windows are connections to the middle ear. There is also a cochlear aqueduct that connects near the base of the cochlea out to the subarachnoid space that allows cerebrospinal fluid to uh, enter into um, the inner ear. Inside of the osseous labyrinth is a membranous labyrinth that pretty much follows the same shape. Um, so this is where there's actual uh, organs that process information. Uh, these membranous areas are filled with a fluid called endolymph. We have the vestibular organ here, uh, which consists of three different ampulla, each one holding a crista ampullaris, which are receptors for a movement that happens uh, of the head. There is also an utricle and a saccule within the vestibule that contain maculae. These also sense movement, so between these uh, five different movement sensing locations, we can detect a lot of um, how the body is moving on the basis of uh, the movement of the head. The cochlear duct, or scala media, uh, in between the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani, uh, contains an important hearing organ known as the organ of corti organ of corti rests on the basilar membrane, and this is where our uh, hair cells for hearing are located. There are three different rows of outer hair cells, uh, giving us about 12,000 hair cells total, and a single roll of inner hair cells uh, of about 3,500 cells in total. These hair cells uh, are part of how hearing happens that so we'll talk about in the physiology part, uh, and this is a complicated process that involves both sensory and motor innovation, despite the fact that this is a primarily a sensory organ. 
Within the organ of corti, there is a space known as the tunnel of corti that separates the inner and outer cells from each other. Each of the hair cells has very small hairs on it known as stereocilia, uh, very minute cilia that protrude from the surface of the hair cells. The stereocilia are connected to one another by tip links and when there are uh, very loud noises that the ear gets exposed to, uh, the hair cells can move very violently and these can break the tip links between different hair cells or break the hair cells themselves uh, and this is where you can get hearing loss from loud noises. Innervation within the organ of corti has both afferent incoming information as well as efferent outgoing information. Uh, there's a many to one mapping that works in different ways for the inner and outer hair cells. The inner hair cells get innervated by many nerve fibers each, while many outer hair cells are innervated by a single nerve fiber. The fact that we have afferent innervation here, uh, incoming information um, to the hair cells to change their behavior reflects the fact that our, um, our hearing is actively tuned uh, in a way similar to how vision works. So it's not just a purely passive receptive process, but on the basis of the information coming in, uh, the way the uh, hair cells respond to information gets altered. Stimulation of the hair cells leads to stimulation of the um, cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. And then from there, auditory information gets transmitted uh, through a number of different uh, channels and stops along the way uh, up to the cortex. So our first stop is a location called the cochlear nucleus, which is at the boundary between the medulla and the pons, the uh, middle and lowest parts um, of our brainstem. From the cochlear nucleus, Information flows to three different places, uh, mostly the uh, olivary complex in the pons, but also to the lateral lemniscus and the inferior colliculus in the midbrain. Um, you can see from this image a number of arrows indicating transmission. Uh, in this case, the image is made a little bit simpler by only showing you um, uh, each innervation on just one side, even though they would both be present on both sides. Um, so there's a, a number of direct connections into the olivary complex, uh, and then also a number of um, uh, connections from the olivary complex up to the uh, inferior colliculus and to the lateral lemniscus, but also some direct connections from the cochlear nucleus up to those midbrain locations. Uh, from there, the transmission channel gets a little more straightforward. Everything flows up to the medial genicleate body in the thalamus. Uh, and remember that the thalamus is an important uh, sensory collocating structure that lies just on top of the brain stem as part of our uh, subcortical structures. From the medial geniculate body in the thalamus, things go up into the temporal lobe, first landing at Heschel's gyrus, and then from there processing extends out to the belt and parabelt around Heschel's gyrus, and then on to the rest of the cortex, depending on exactly what you're processing. 